Hey kids, I am Pastor Kayla. I am so excited to be with you in Faith Factory. I can't wait to meet you and get to know you. But for now, I wanted you to get to hear from God's Word because I know you've gone a long time all summer without hearing uh, in Faith Factory, hearing about God. So I got a great lesson for you this morning. Um, but I feel like I need to tell you three things about me, okay? So I want to tell you one is my favorite Disney character is Rapunzel. She's awesome with her super long hair that has like powers, okay? My favorite food is Kraft macaroni and cheese. Who doesn't love good mac and cheese? Yes. And then number three, let me think. Oh, I have to tell you about my doggie. I have the cutest little doggie. He's like six pounds. And guess what his name is? His name is Samson, just like in the Bible. So I can't wait to hear all these things about you and worship God together. This morning, we're going to talk about how God is indescribable. Do you know what that means? Indescribable? It means something you can't describe. God created everything, right? He created the world we live in. He created animals plants, the sea, and the ocean. And we know from our memory verse, says Psalms 145.3, it says, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. God is indescribable. Say that with me. God is indescribable, right? We can't ever understand how great he is, but he is really great. Yes. So, we can see God's greatness in all of creation. He's made some pretty cool stuff. In fact, you know one thing God made? Salt. What salt? What do you do with salt? You put it on your food, you put it on your french fries, your pretzels, right? You probably don't think there's much about this simple ingredient, but today our lesson is gonna talk about salt. So I'm wondering, have you ever seen a salt flat? Well, take a look at this picture on the screen. And that's a salt flat. It looks like sand, right? but it's actually salt. Salt flats are created when lakes and the desert dry up. That's crazy, isn't it? Okay, or how about the Dead Sea? Check out this picture of the Dead Sea. The extreme salt has caused some really amazing salt formations in the area of the world, which is actually where, near Jesus, where Jesus lived when he was here on earth. Check out this picture. This is people floating in the Dead Sea. That's crazy. There's so much salt in this sea that it's impossible for people to sink. That's crazy, isn't it? Salt is pretty amazing. So I think after children's chat today, you should have a salted pretzel, right? But before we do get on to our story, let's worship together. So I'm going to introduce you to this new song called Beautiful. And wherever you are in your living room, in your room, in your kitchen, I want you to stand to your feet and dance and sing with us.
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna I just wanna thank you cause everything you made is so Great job singing, guys. I love worshiping with you. So one thing we know about Jesus is that Jesus was a teacher. He loved to teach. And he kind of got a reputation. People knew him as being a teacher. And so everywhere he'd go, large crowds would follow him because they wanted to hear him speak. And in fact, one day he had gone up onto a hill and a large crowd had gathered. And so Jesus decided to teach them. And this is found in Matthew. 513 let's read what Jesus said you are the salt of the earth but suppose the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything it will be thrown out people will walk all over it okay let's rewind here we're talking about salt Jesus is talking about salt and he says you are the salt of the earth what does that mean crazy, isn't it? Well, back then, salt was very valuable. In fact, people gave salt away as a gift. We also know that sacrifices in the Old Testament had salt. And even crazier, salt was more than a seasoning. It was, it preserved meat and it was used to make the color purple. Isn't that crazy? So royalty back then wore purple robes. Salt was important. So just like salt is valuable, you're valuable. God made you and you're valuable, so you're like salt. And one thing it means is you're valuable and it means you're made in God's image. You're made in God's image. And as followers of Jesus, we're supposed to preserve things. Remember the salt, it keeps the meat good. That's what preserve means. And so you are to keep things good in this world by being like Jesus. We're supposed to act in a way that honors God every day. Just like salt keeps the food good, we're to keep the world good by being Jesus' light. But Jesus didn't stop there. So first he tells them to what? Be the salt of the earth. Then he says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. So what did Jesus say there? He said, you are the light of the world. What do lights do? They shine bright in the darkness. Anybody afraid of the dark? Sometimes you need a night light or turn the light on in the hallway. Yeah, when we're scared, we, we need light. And Jesus is the light. And he tells you that you're the light of the world. So when we do things for people around us, we're shining God's light for them. When you make a card for your mom, when you help your dad take the trash out, all those little things when you're doing something that shows you care to someone else, you're being the light of Jesus. How about when that friend at school is sitting at the table all by themselves and no one wants to be their friend and you go over and sit with them and have lunch and get to know them. You're being the light of the world, just like Jesus said you are. Listen to the next thing Jesus said about light. Matthew 5, 16, he says, In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. So what happens when we let our light shine? Well, other people can see that, and they'll think you're different. You know what? When I was a kid, I have to tell you this. You know, people said I was weird. They said I was like, like a light that I was joy. And you know what I would tell them? It's because I have Jesus in my heart. I shine bright for him. That's what I want for you guys. Yeah, the way you act, the way you talk, what you listen to, what you watch, all of those things, people are watching. And when you shine bright for Jesus, you get to be a good witness for him. You know what that means? Then people will ask you, why are you different? And you can say, because of Jesus, and you can tell them about Jesus. That's why we're here to do that, to tell others about Jesus. And so we can use our creativity to help others, right? To share God's big story with the world around us. So later today, I hope you have a flashlight or maybe your mom or dad has a flashlight on their phone. 
And when it gets a little darker out, I want you to shine your flashlight around a dark room or go outside and shine the flashlight around. Or go outside and look up at the stars and try to keep it still, okay? I want you to do this later today. And just look at the beautiful sight the stars shining in the night sky. And I want you to think about God. Think about his creativity and that it's endless. It's endless, it's indescribable. And I want you to remember that the same God who made the sun and the stars and everything in the universe made you, just like you are with your nose, with your ears, right? With your funny toes, toes are weird, aren't they? Yeah. God made you just the way you are and he loves you. And he didn't make you for no reason. He made you with a purpose to what? To be the salt and the light on this earth. To shine bright for Jesus. That's my hope for you, is that you'd shine bright for him. How do you do that? By being different, by standing out for Jesus, by speaking up for him, by helping your friend, right? By doing acts of love and service everywhere you go. Our bottom line this morning is God created you to share his story. What did God do? He created you to share his story, to tell others about Jesus and his love for you. What did Jesus do for us? He died on the cross. See, we're sinners, right? What, is, what does sin mean? It dis, we disobey God and we all do it. We're all sinners and we're separated from God. So we needed Jesus and Jesus died on the cross and then he rose again, he's alive. He lives in heaven and he did that so we could be forgiven. And that's really good news. We need to share that with everyone because someday when we die, we get to go to heaven and be with Jesus. We have the forgiveness for our sins when we disobey. And so you like, God wants you to spread that to everyone you meet. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for creating everything we see. Thank you for creating each one of us in your image. Help us to be the salt and the light of the earth, to reach out to our friends, to love one another, or to tell others boldly about you. In Jesus' name, amen. God created you to share his story. So go out today, this week at school, and share his story. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.